Well, welcome. I am excited to be here. My name is Doug Dane. I'm the International Sales Director for the Proctor Gallagher Institute. And we're here live in Toronto. We've got people from 22 countries all around the world. Welcome, everybody. And I want to welcome you at home, wherever you are, in your home or your office or in your car, on your phone. Uh, you're in for an exciting hour. I'm about to introduce you to a man that needs no introduction. For 57 years, he's been working with individuals and companies all around the world. He's known everywhere he goes. Uh, he's considered the leading teacher in human potential and personal development. He started in the hit movie, The Secret, which, which reached millions and millions of people around the globe and continues to. And today, for the next hour, you're going to be blown away how you can turn your thinking into results. Please welcome Bob Proctor. The lady that you see on the screen here with me, one hour changed the course of her life. Now, we come from opposite side of the tracks. The lady on the screen is Sandy Gallagher. She is a an attorney, a banking attorney, a securities lawyer that had done billions of dollars in business when she first attended a seminar a little over 10 years ago. And she became fascinated with the information we use. She went through every program we had. She studied it like a scientist, which wasn't unusual for her because that's the way she went through school. She was always the top of her class. And as she started to study this, she thought of the boardrooms that she'd been in, where they were doing bank mergers, bringing banks together, and how the different CEOs were having difficulty. They were having difficulty agreeing on simple points. And she thought, if they had this kind of information. And over a period of time, she put together what she thought would really help those people. And she came to me and she said, I want to make a program with you. And so she said she knew everything that I was teaching. And she put it together in a very organized pattern. And she called it thinking into results. The truth is most people do not think. Mental activity does not constitute thinking. So I'm going to ask you for the next hour to really think about what I'm saying. Open your mind. Put your guard down. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to share with you. It can literally change your life. Well, Sandy Gallagher did such a marvelous job with this, I went and asked her if she would like to become a managing partner, a controlling partner in our company. And she did. And she and I are 50-50 partners, and we started the Proctor Gallagher Institute. Now, I had been in this business since 19... 68. I began to study it in 1961, and I've never stopped. We have more made, made more headway with Sandy as our CEO than I had made in the pri previous 40-some years. I have a marvelous partner. We've got a phenomenal company. We have some of the best products you'll find anywhere in the world, and that's what I want to share with you. Now, from this point on, I'm going to ask you, just think of you. Bring all of your conscious attention to bear in yourself. Think about what you're doing with your life. Think about what you have been doing with your life. Do you know, it's a rather sad truth that most people go all the way through their life and they never live the life they really want to live. They don't drive the car they want to drive. They don't live in the house they really want to live in. They don't take the vacations they'd want to take. You have to ask why. You'll find people living sometimes in the richest country in the world, in the richest country in the history of the world, yet they're having difficulty getting by. Do you know, you and I are God's highest form of creation. We have powers locked up within us beyond the scope of our imagination, and we habitually fail to use them. Now, I believe we habitually fail to use them because we've never been taught we've got them. I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to touch on things about your marvelous mind. I'm going to cause you to really take a look at yourself. And when you do, everything's going to change. You see, the truth is, you can literally create your own economy. Yet it doesn't matter what's going on in the marketplace. Yet it never has mattered. You're going to find in the very best economy, there's people that are 
failing miserably. Yet you're going to find in the very worst economy, there's people earning millions of dollars. We have been raised and trained and programmed to let the outside world control us. And yet all the great teachers, as far back as you can go, go way back to the ancient Babylonians, they've all told us to go inside, not outside. We've been trained to live through our senses, to go by what we see, hear, smell, taste, touch. That's sad, and it's not, it's not necessary. Because we've got locked up within us something that's absolutely incredible. You can literally create your own economy. Now, when I talk about an hour to change your life, my life was literally changed in one hour. I sat down with a man one time, and he put an R on a sheet of paper. And he said, Bob, I want you to let that represent the results in your life. I didn't even know this man very well, but I did know him, and he knew me. He knew me a lot better than I know him. And then he put two H's and a W beside the R. Then I said, Bob, let that represent happiness, health, and wealth. Then he asked me if I thought he was a happy guy. I said, yeah, you look pretty happy to me. He said, have you ever seen me when I was broke? And I hadn't. This guy always had a roll of bills on him. He said, have you ever seen me sick? I hadn't admit I hadn't. Well, he said, you've got to be one of the most miserable people I've ever met. And you know something? I was. And looking back in retrospect, I was an unhappy kid. I was born during the Depression. My early years was during the Second World War. Everything was rationed. Mothers were all working in war factories. It wasn't a great time, and I was not a happy kid as I look back. I'm not asking you to feel sorry for you. I'm just stating the way I was, and I grew up, and I stayed that way. I was 26 years old. I wouldn't go to school. I was losing, and he said, why don't you change? Now, at the time, I was earning $4,000 a year, but I owed $6,000. And he said, what do you really want? And I thought, if I had enough money, all my problems would go away. Now, of course, that's not true, but that's what I was thinking at the time. He said, you know, Bob, you don't have to live that way. He said, if you'll give me your undivided attention just for an hour, I can show you how to change your whole life. And then he pointed out that there's two things that you must know if you're going to create wealth. Now, creating wealth wasn't even, in the, it wasn't even in the cards. Just trying to pay the people that were phoning and wanting the money I owed them was enough for me. But he says, there's two things you have to know, just two. And he said, you don't have to be a rocket science, Bob. He said, you have to know where you are, you have to know where you're going, and then you have to move in that direction. Now, when you look at that, it's so simple and so obvious you have to ask yourself, why are so many people stuck? And I'm going to tell you a lot of people are stuck. You don't have to ask me or check with me. Go to the actuarial department of any insurance company, and they'll tell you most people are stuck. And they stay stuck all their life. It has nothing to do with their level of intellect. Many of them have been through illustrious universities. You know? And they're not making it. It's not because they don't know how. It's because they don't. See, everyone knows how to do better. The problem is doing it, and they're not doing it. Now, you see, the obvious problem is these people don't have goals. But I found out that's not true. Some of them don't have goals, but that's not the real problem. You'd have to ask, why don't they have goals? Now, I want you to think about what I'm telling you. This can literally change your life. Don't treat this just as a sales presentation or something like that. Treat this as some basic truths that can change your life, because it literally changed mine. See, I think the problem is down here. It's where we are. Most people don't know where they are. They don't know. I'm talking about mentally. Physically, I know I'm here on the stage at this program, and I'm broadcasting all over the world. I know that. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to inside. I'm referring to what causes me to live the way I live, dress the way I dress, walk the way I walk, talk the way I talk, study what I study. This is what holds us back. And I'm going to tell you, it's something called a paradigm. Now, the average individual doesn't even know what a paradigm is. And yet, a paradigm is literally controlling their life. That's rather sad, and it doesn't have to be that way. I'm going to talk to you about a program called Thinking Into Results. This is the program that Sandy Gallagher designed a number of years ago. It's being used all over the world by individuals. It was designed for executives 
Lo and behold, when we got it out into the marketplace, teenagers were using it. People were taking it, giving it to their kids. What it was doing was bringing order to their life. You know, Thomas Troward many years ago said, order is heaven's first law. Think about how you'd live if you were in a heavenly state. I would imagine it would be a very nice feeling. Well, this program brings order to your mind. Now, I'm not going to go through and tell you every part of the program. That's not my purpose here today. My purpose here is to show you the benefits that you would receive if you subjected yourself to the teachings that's in this program. And the person that's invited you onto this presentation is a person that has that program. They can help you understand how to use it. They can help you understand how to get the very best out of your life by using it. It's so basic and so simple, and yet so misunderstood. You see, a paradigm controls us. It's literally controlling our life. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. Now think of that. Paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And get this, almost all of our behavior is habitual. We wake up in the morning and we move into action. No thought, we just automatically move into action. In fact, if you reflect when you get out of bed in the morning, there's a pattern that you follow into. If you live with somebody, they have a pattern and you don't mess around with their pattern or there's trouble in River City. You see, we automatically, we get dressed a certain way. We're programmed. This program runs very deep. It's genetic and it's environmental and I'll talk about that in a moment. Well, as you start to understand this, You'll see how your life can change. Now, I'm going to show you all of the areas of your life your paradigm has control over. Your perception is controlled by your paradigm. Your perception is controlled. That's how you see the world. You see the world according to your perception. Perception is a mental faculty. Do you know you can change your perception? Let's suppose you have a challenge that you're facing. You're having a particular problem, and you're not quite sure how to solve it. If you would write that problem out in a piece of paper, put it on the table, and sit back and look at it. Then go sit on the other side of the table and make believe you were someone else. Say, if I was Bob Proctor, how would I look at that? Then go sit somewhere else and look at it and say, if I was so-and-so, how would I look at that? And you're going to find your perception will shift. It's a simple way to solve your problem. Perception is how we see the world. Most people don't have anywhere near the problems they think they have. They have a perception problem. They're looking at things the wrong way. You, use of your time. Do you know we all get exactly the same amount of time? Most people say they haven't got the time, they haven't got the money. Do you know that a hobo sleeping on a park bench has exactly the same amount of time as the most e effective executive in the world? We all get the same. We get all there is. So it's what we do with our time. I remember working with Earl Nightingale one time and I asked him, I said, how did you learn to master time management? He looked at me and said, Bob, I didn't master time management. Nobody masters time. He said, time can't be managed. He said, we manage our activity. You might want to remember that. Our paradigm controls our creativity. When I was a kid and I left grade eight, the teacher said, Bob, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Melbourne Collegiate. Oh, she said, Bob, don't go there. You will never do well in the business world. She's good at Danforth Tech, learn a trade. She left me with the idea, I didn't have any creative ability. I believed her. She was the teacher. Do you know that every one of us is equally creative? We don't all express our creativity, but we're creating God's image. We are here to create, and we can. And we've got higher faculties that enable us. And when we do, we become much more effective. And as we become more effective, we become much more productive. Now, all this happens by understanding a paradigm. That's what thinking into results is all about. The person that invited you on this call has material that will change your life like night and day. But you've got to study it with them. And then logic. Logic is like an invisible ceiling that most people never go through. They set goals, somebody will say, well, that's just not realistic. I wonder what the Wright brothers caused their neighbors to think. Do you know, it was just a little over 100 years ago, 115, 18 years ago, that they got us off the ground. Now think. Do you think they let logic stop them? No one had ever flown. They were bicycle mechanics. They weren't engineers. They weren't flight engineers. But they got us off the ground. And look at today. I see that thing, Boeing, I think it is, have a great big Dreamliner. I saw a thing on television where it taxis a little bit and then turns this way. Woo! Goes straight up. Hundreds of people on it. 
the right brothers would be turning over their grave they saw that deal happen. Now think. Logic. Absolutely refuse to let logic stop you. I had the good fortune of working for, with Sir Edmund Hillary. He was the first man to stand on the top of Mount Everest. I worked on two or three occasions. The only thing different about him and anybody else I know was his size. Very big man. Shake hands with him because his hand would wrap right around mine. He was a big man. No one had ever been to the top of Mount Everest. Many people died trying, but he stood right on the top. And you know, there's been over a thousand people do it since then. It seems we're waiting for somebody else to do things. Why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? That's what my mentor said to me. And so I decided I would. How about our ability to earn money? Do you know that school doesn't teach us how to earn money? I don't care what university. You can go to all the top universities. They do not teach you to earn money. They'll teach you to count it. They'll teach you to store it. They'll teach you how to invest it. Why do you think we have economists that have maybe a doctorate in economy and they're broke? They know all kinds of things about money, but they don't learn how to earn it. Well, do you know teaching and results is going to teach you how to earn money? That's right. I grew up with the idea you've got to be really smart to earn money. It's not true at all. There's some people that aren't very bright at all earning money. Now think. It's almost as if we have a box around all these areas. And every time we go to move, we go to change how we're utilizing our time, we hit the wall. Well, I have found when you make a simple decision that you're going to change the paradigm, the walls come down. Now think, these walls are around us. Whenever we go to do anything, we bounce in the wall and bounce back. When we just make a decision, the wall comes down. Now, I want you to really think, I want you to imagine how your entire life would change as you begin improving any or all these areas. If the, the change would be huge. Now, here's the beautiful part. And I stand as living proof that this works. The change isn't only huge, the change is permanent. Think. For 57 years, I've just kept getting better and better and better because I bought into this. I let Ray Stanford changed my life, and he did it in less than an hour. Think if you only changed your perception, if that was the only thing you changed. You changed your habitual way of looking at life. How your life would change. My goodness, have you any idea what that would do to your income? It could multiply it. I always tell people, you could turn your annual income to a monthly income. Now, if a person's mind not open, they just laugh at that and say, yeah, I bet you can. Ask yourself how you would like to, because I could show you how to do it. And so can the person that invited you on this call. It's a beautiful thing. You see, when Ray did this, he said something else. He said, your way's not working. I was earning 4,000, I owed six. He said, do you study anything? I said, what do you mean? He said, do you read anything? And I said, no, I can't read. Now, that wasn't true. I could read. Not well, but I could. I have since found out that I read about as well as most people. The average person reads at about a grade 7 level. And that's because we learn by the time we read, to read by the time we're in grade 7, and we never improve upon the skill. He gave me this book. This is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I got this, then I got Earl Nightingale's condensed narration of it, and I started to study it. I've read this every day since October the 21st, 1961. My life changed like night and day. Now, when I met him, I was losing. I was earning 4000 I owed six. I had a bad work record. I even had a bad attitude. I couldn't hold a job. But you know something? Like that, everything started to change. Over the next year, my income went to 175000 from 4000 Now, if you do the math, that's about 43.75 times what I was earning. And I did that in a year. Now, I didn't actually earn the 175 in a year, but it got me income up to 15000 a month. So if you annualize that, that's what it came to. And it's just kept going up from there. I did it washing floors. Somebody said there was good money for cleaning floors. I said, I'm not proud, I'll clean floors. Do you know in less than five years, I was cleaning floors in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, and London, England. And my income had gone over a million dollars a year. Now, it was while I was in England, and I was earning all this money, and I'd just throw it away. I mean, I'd spend it as I was earning it. And one day I thought, I don't think I'm being very bright. And then I started to ask, how did this all happen to me? You see, I was doing the right thing 
but I didn't know what it was. I had something that was non-transferable. I was what you call an unconscious competent. I was competent, but I wasn't consciously aware of why. And you know that I have found since then, almost all people that are doing very well are unconscious competence. They can't explain why. Therefore, they've got something that's non-transferable. They can't even give it to their children. And I made up my mind while I was living there that I was going to figure out why I changed. You see, I'd been raised, I do believe, as I just said, if you're going to earn money, you've got to be really smart. I knew I wasn't that smart. I mean, I'd gone to high school for two months. I had no business experience. I'd been raised to believe if you don't go to school, you can't get a good job. I didn't have a good job. I owned the whole company. So I really started to study. It took me 10 and a half years. Now, what I'm going to show you from here on is what I learned in that 10 and a half years. And when I learned, when I figured out why I had changed, all I wanted to do was teach it to other people. And that's all I've done. I made up my mind many, many years ago, I would build a company that operated all over the world. Today, we are operating all over the world. You don't have to be that smart. You can hire people that are very smart in all kinds of areas. I have attracted people in this company, first with Sandy and then all these other people. We've got the most phenomenal people in our company that you're going to find anywhere in the world. And our objective is to show people how to do what I did. And you know what it requires? It requires a decision. That's all it requires. Most people have never learned how to make a decision. You see, when he told me to do this, read this, and then do exactly as he told me, he said, if you do exactly what I tell you, your whole life will change. I'm going to show you something about decision. I want you to look at this very, very carefully. And if on the camera, if you put this on full screen, please. Let those lines represent levels of vibration. I have a cell phone here, and the cell phone operates on a level of vibration. The level of vibration is referred to as a frequency. Now, come down here and understand this. You and I think on frequencies. Thought is energy. It's the most potent form of energy there is. Thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space. So if we let these little puffy clouds represent thoughts, it's the thoughts that we think that produce the results that we get. Now, that's the one point all great leaders have agreed on. They've disagreed on virtually everything else but this one point. We become what we think about. Every great leader that has ever lived, they agree on this. We become what we think about. Well, the results we're getting are not the results we want. We say, there's the result I want, and we shoot at a target. That's where I'd like my income to go. That's the kind of car I want to drive. That's the way I want the kids to be educated. They're the kind of trips I want to take. And then we say, that is my goal, and I'm going to do that as soon as I get the money. That's the way it works. I am going to do that as soon as the kids are finished school. I'm going to do that as soon as, as soon as this changes. But you know something? That won't change because our thinking hasn't changed. You know what happens? Pretty soon the decision fades. And then you know what fades? The goals fade. Why? We're not on the right frequency of thought. We're not thinking the right way at all. You see, the frequency that has the thoughts to manifest the dreams that we've got is up here, and we're operating away down here. That won't work. Do you know what it calls for? That calls for something we call a paradigm shift. Yet if we don't shift the paradigm, our thinking is going to stay where it is. Where were you a year ago? Probably much the same state as you are now. Well, it may go up a little bit, but no great change. Most people don't make a great change because they don't have the right thoughts. You see, what we need is some of this high-octane energy. We need to get into this energy, these higher thoughts that change things. And when we do, everything starts to change. We've got to get off that frequency, and we've got to get on a higher one. And when we build a big goal, we've got to get our thoughts up on that frequency. You see, the thoughts to manifest the goal are already here. That's where we have to go. Now, if we come back to regular screen, we've always been able to have a cell phone. Always. We just didn't know how. But the ability to make it was always here. There's only two areas to go to to find out anything about ourselves. One science and the other is theology. Both of these areas clearly, clearly indicate nothing is created or destroyed. Everything's in a constant evolution of change. The whole universe operates in an orderly state, we say, by law. 
Well, we teach these laws. That's what thinking into results is all about. A person starts to understand the law. See, it's not an accident four or five percent of the population are big winners, and some of them aren't very bright, and some of them are absolutely brilliant. What are the other 90-some percent doing? They're on the wrong track. They're letting the paradigm control them. Well, I have found when we learn to control the flow of thought energy and we let it flow freely to and through us, everything begins to improve. It's no accident. That's just the way it works. You see, I said I want to talk about you right at the start of this. And I said in the next hour, I'm going to show you how you can change. But I am not able to change you. There's only one person in the whole universe that can change you, and that's you. No one can do it. Now, there's probably a lot of people who'd like you to change, but they can't do it. There's no one who can change me. I'm the only one that can change me. And it took me a long time to understand that. There is a photograph of you if we used Curlian photography. Curlian, Semyon Curlian was a, a Russian photographer who way back, it was actually the year I was born, he perfected a form of photography where he could photograph the energy coming from mass, and that's what your body is, a mass of energy. And he'd photograph this energy. Now, the vibration that your body's in is going to dictate the color and the depth of that energy. Your brain is an electronic switching station. And as you activate brain cells, you set up a vibration in the body. Conscious awareness of vibration is called a feeling. So if you're not feeling good, you're in a negative vibration. When you're feeling good, you're in a positive vibration. Well, we can change that vibration at will. So what we really want to do now is understand a little bit about the mind. Now, there was a doctor down in San Antonio a number of years ago, again, same time as Curlian, back in 1934. He said, let's look at the mind and paradigms. Now, he pointed out no one had ever seen the mind. Anyway, ever. He was very involved in the healing arts, and he said, that if we're going to have health, we're going to have to start in the mind. The healing has to take place in the mind. The body manifests it. And he said, since nobody's ever seen the mind, he said, I'm going to draw a picture of the mind. See, when most people think of the mind, they think of the brain. But the brain isn't the mind anymore than your fingernail is. So he said, I'm going to draw a picture. And he said, let this represent the mind. Now, without question, in 57 years, this is the most valuable idea I have ever learned. So I would really pay close attention to this. Don't treat it as a little comic book drawing. This is genius. It really is truly genius. Now, let the top half of the big circle represent your conscious mind. The bottom half would represent your subconscious, and the little circle represent the body. Now, this is not actually the way it is, but we have to have an image to work with. So that's why we use this. And as we get into this, we find out some interesting stuff. As I say, it's the most valuable idea I've ever learned. So let's look and see what we've learned about this. There is the mind, the conscious mind, the subconscious, and the body. Now, how does it work? Well, the conscious mind is our thinking mind. That's the part we think with. The conscious mind is also called the educated mind. That's where we put the books. That's where the teachers are interested in you putting your books. They want you to remember it so you can repeat it. This is also where the intellect is resident, and it's the intellectual factors that separate us from all the rest of the animal kingdom. Do you know all the other little creatures on the planet? They're complete at home in their environment. They blend in. You and I, we're the only creature on the planet that's totally disoriented in our environment. And that is because we've been given the godlike ability to create our own environment. We have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. We've got all these higher faculties, but we've never been taught, so we taught how to develop them. Thinking into results, you'll learn how to develop them. And like that, you multiply your effectiveness as a human being. Now, the subconscious mind operates totally different than the conscious. Totally different. It cannot accept. It has to reject everything, that, or it just accepts everything that comes into it. Now, the conscious mind can choose. It can accept or reject. As you're listening to me, you can accept or reject what I'm telling you. You can accept or reject what the news broadcasters are telling you about the economy. You can reject the idea when somebody tells you you can't do something. All things are possible. And when you reject it, you've got the ability to originate because you're a creative being. Now, let's go back to the subconscious. The subconscious mind must accept whatever is given to it. The subconscious mind is immoral. It's like the earth. It doesn't care what you plant. I, uh, I love the way Earl Nightingale explained it on his Strangest Secret Record. He said, you can plant nightshade, a deadly poison, and not a sixteenth of an inch away, you can plant corn as sweet food. And one will grow with just as great an abundance as the other. You can plant a negative idea in your subconscious mind, it will grow just the same as the positive. It doesn't care what you plant, but it will return what you plant. You see, it cannot reject. And here's the beautiful truth. Your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what's imagined and what's real. 
all the creation of everything you see around you started out in the imagination of a person that got emotionally involved and they didn't change it. Now let's take what we just took a look at here. I'm not expecting you to remember that, but I'm going to ask you to use it just for a moment. This is us today. We're being inundated with information from newspapers, from radio, from television. We're getting bombarded with all kinds of negatives. Now because we have a reasoning factor, one of our higher faculties, we've got the ability to think. You say, I don't think I like that information. He says, there's going to be a recession. I'm not going to participate. And I'm going to stop listening so I can just tell all that information to go away. Do you want to know what the problem is? We don't do that. We not only don't tell it to go away, we leave our mind wide open and it goes directly to our subconscious mind. Why would we do that? Remember what we said about the subconscious? It has no ability to reject. So it'll accept it. And that's when it takes control of your life. Why would we do that? Well, we're programmed to do it. That's what the paradigm is. The paradigm is a multitude of ideas that are fixed in our subconscious mind. They're genetic and environmental. Now let's close the window on this for a moment and look at how this started. Take a little baby. A little baby is born with subconscious mind wide open. That baby is a product of its environment. Doesn't matter what's going on around that baby, that's what goes in there. You could take a baby out of an English-speaking home in New York and move it to Shanghai, that baby would grow up speaking fluent Chinese. No knowledge of the English language. We know that. You can put a baby in, a in an environment where four or five languages are spoken, that little baby will learn all four or five. Just as easy as another person would learn one. Because the subconscious can't reject. And so over and over and over, everything that's going on in the environment goes right into that baby's subconscious mind. In fact, the self-image that you hold was built right there. You have an image of yourself. Some people are very shy, quiet, and withdrawn. Others are very gregarious. It's all an expression of the self-image. We truly are the product of our environment. Now think of this for a moment. A, a man named Robert Heinlein wrote a book way back in the 60s, Strangers in a Strange Land. Yet he said, in absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely loyal to performing daily trivia until ultimately we become enslaved by it. Well, you know, most of the people that we're surrounded by as little kids are enslaved to daily trivia, so we grow up exactly the same way. And that self-image turns into a paradigm. And here we are 30, 40, 60 years later doing the same thing. Well, we know better, but we're not doing what we know. We're doing what we're programmed to do. Now think. We go to school. School gave us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us about anything about the paradigm. Therefore, we don't do what we already know how to do. I tell people very openly, you already know how to do better. Why don't you do it? And they don't know. You know how to do better. You don't know why you're not doing it. Well, I'm showing you. Superior knowledge, inferior results. What's that cause? It causes confusion. Let's use our model again. School gave us the knowledge. We have a head full of knowledge. They think it's learning when they give you questions and you can answer them correctly. You pass, you get the degree. But what you've got in your mind doesn't necessarily equate any results. You'll find people that are absolutely brilliant that are getting poor results. They're getting poor results. Why? You're going to find other people that don't really know very much and they're getting great results. The paradigm controls the results. Now when I learned this, I found that that's how I had changed my life. I did the right thing over a 10-year period of time and everything started to happen. I was winning and I couldn't understand why. Because I knew I wasn't that smart, but I really believed you should be smart. It's got nothing to do with being smart. It has to do with being wise. It has to do with awareness. And we want to be aware of what we're doing. Now, I want you to think, if you want to change your results, you really want to get better results, there's only one way to do it, and that is by changing your paradigm. And that is what this program is designed to do. This is a program that is designed to change paradigms. And it's changing it for thousands of people all over the world. Yet it is the most effective program in the world. The fact that our company has it makes me very proud. It's a representation of the great work we do. And the person that called on you is a person that can show you how you can benefit from this. It's so good and yet so misunderstood. Now this is really a black and white deal, so I want you to look very carefully. It doesn't matter how hard you work. Yet it doesn't matter how many hours you put in. If your paradigm does not change, ultimately the results are going to remain the same from one year to the next. Don't take my word for it. Just look back over your life. 
Oh, there may be small incremental changes, but did you ever double, triple, quadruple? Just think, in one year, without very much knowledge, I went from 4,000 a year to 15,000 a month. Earning money is a game. It's not a difficult thing to do. We teach people how to earn money. I'm going to show you a bit about it, okay? Now think, when paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. You see people, you see them messing up their life, you think, God, why are they doing that? Because they're programmed to do it. Genetic programming, that's why you look like your relatives. See, the, the programming starts at the moment of conception. All the genes, all the DNA is passed down generation to generation. God knows how far it goes back. You gotta learn to control the flow. Now here's an area that most people never really learn. Sandy and I love teaching this. We love earning it, and we love teaching people how to earn it. And there's no end to what you can earn. I think this is one of the most beautiful parts of the thinking of the results program. Because this is the part most people never learn, and it's actually fascinating. I could show anyone how to multiply their income, but I can only do it if they will act on the ideas that I share. Now that's what the man told me, and you know something? He was right. He said, if you just do exactly what I tell you, and so I decided I would. You gotta get out of the box. The old way doesn't work. Creativity is the opposite of routine. We can't fall into a routine. You see, you can become very creative because you are creative. You are God's highest form of creation. And we've got creative faculties and we want to start using them. Now look at this. There's a law governing compensation. What is compensation? Compensation is a reward we receive for service rendered. And there's laws governing this. Do you know, this law of compensation clearly states the amount of money you earn will always be an exact ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, then the difficulty there is in replacing you. Now, there's probably a tremendous need for what you do. You don't even have to change that. You don't even have to go anywhere else. Tremendous need for what you do. The second one, your ability to do it. If you become very good at it, you're going to be very difficult to replace, and that's when the stock goes up. You see, all we have to focus on is our ability to do whatever we're doing. We want to become a master at it. And you know something? Very few people in your field, or in any field, really learn how to master what they're doing. Do you know the person that studies thinking into results with the sole purpose of mastering what they're doing? They stand out like a giraffe in a herd of field mice. I mean, it's just, there's no comparison. Absolutely no comparison to what they're doing. And this can happen fast. It doesn't happen. See, we already know how to do it. What we have to do is spring all that knowledge loose, get it flowing through us. That's why we say you've got to control the flow. Now look at this for a moment. Three income earning strategies, just there's three. You don't have to be the brightest cat in town to remember this. M1, M2, and M3. Now if you're gonna teach your children anything about earning money, and I would suggest you do, because if you don't, nobody else is going to. If you're gonna teach your kids how to earn money, you wanna teach them number three. It's magnificent, it's an absolute l winning formula. I stumbled on that back in the 60s. That's how I got up to a million a year, but I didn't know what I was doing. I'm showing you now, because I learned. M1 is a terrible strategy, and yet it's used by 96% of the population. This is where people trade their time for money. You see, that, that strategy has an inherent problem. You run out of time. M2 is an excellent strategy, but it's only used by 3% of the population, and for good reason. This is where you invest money, turn money, and most people haven't got any money to invest. Some of the people in M1 will squirrel a little bit away because they've also been programmed they should save, so they squirrel it away at the expense of a life. They don't live the way they want. They gotta save a little. And then if they invest it the wrong way, it's gone. M3 was something I stumbled on. It's only used by 1% of the population. Some of them are brilliant, some of them aren't very brilliant at all. I wasn't, and I learned to use it. This is where 1% earn about 96% of all the money that's earned. We know that there's not an even distribution of money, but it is fair because it's by law. You might not think it's fair, but the more you study the law, you more realize it is, and you could move into the M3 strategy. You could do it just like that. Thinking into results will show you how to do that. That's where you multiply your time by setting up multiple sources of income. It's such a cool concept, and it's one most people don't understand. This can be accomplished by having multiple sources of income. Wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources. Now the world is changing. Our world's not getting bigger, our world is getting smaller. We're not a long ways away from anywhere anymore. The world's getting smaller. You, you can actually have business all over the world. 
And in Thinking Into Results, we'll show you how to do it, because that's what Thinking Into Results is about. Now, we call this MSIs, Multiple Sources of Income. I figured out one time, I was on a flight from Toronto to Kuala Lumpur. It's 25 hours in the air, one way. If you go any further, you're coming back, so I had lots of time. And I was trying to figure out, what are the wealthy people that do this different? They don't have one source of income, they have multiple sources, and you can just set them up. Here at the uh, Proctor Gallagher Institute, we even got something called the Marketplace, the PGI Marketplace. And we, you join the Marketplace, and we put you in touch with people all over the world. You can see where people are, you can contact them, and they all think this way. You can set up joint ventures with them, you can set up multiple sources of income, and you can just keep adding it. The Marketplace is genius, it's absolutely genius. Now you say, well, all the sources of income the same size? Oh, you goodness, no. Some are big and some are small, but I'll tell you something they all have in common. They all flow into your bank. This is not fantasy, folks. This is the real deal. And if you get into thinking and results, you're going to learn how this works. And it comes from all over the place. I have money coming into my bank account from all parts of the world, even while I'm sleeping. And the truth is, you know, you can get to a point where you can earn more money when you're sleeping than you even spend when you're awake. Earning money is a game. Very few people understand it. We teach it. And we're very good at it. Now look it. Buckminster Fuller said, you never change things by fighting existing reality. To change something, you have to build a new model. That's what you have to do. We're showing you how to build a new model. And it's a beautiful model. Most people are extras in their own movie. They think, gosh, if only I could do that. They see somebody doing something well and say, wow, I wish I could do that. You can do whatever you want. But you've got to decide what you want. What do you want? Most people don't have a clearly defined goal. They have never sat down and written it out. You get into this program, and I'm going to tell you, you'll have one, and it'll be a beautiful one. I'll tell you what most people want. They want time and money freedom. You see, that brings out the best in them. To be able to shape your future, you've got to be willing and able to change your paradigm. If you're prepared to make a decision without asking somebody else, don't say to somebody, what do you think I should do? They don't know what to do. And that's what most people do. Go to somebody that does know. I am very good at this. I'm not much good at anything else, but I don't want to do anything else. I've taught this all over the world, some of the largest companies in the world. And that's the program that'll do it. That program is so complete, it's so comprehensive, it's going to take you to a whole new level of life. Now, I've been doing it for 57 years. 57 years. I could tell you stories that would just rock your world of things that have changed. Little companies that became giants. Individuals that were struggling that all of a sudden are building big companies. And this is how they did it. They did it through this program. It'll totally change your life's results. Now, I want you to think. It's a 12-month professional coaching program, $6,250. You say, wow, that's a lot of money. Compared to what? Listen, you're going to spend it in the next year anyway. This is over a year. You've got a professional coach that we have trained at this institute that's going to work with you. They'll show you how to take and use this over a year. A year from now, you'd need a telescope to look back and see you where, where you were. Sixty-two fifty. My goodness, you couldn't buy a good used car for that. But you can change your life. You have a program here that'll change the course of your life. Now, if you're like most people, you're going to go and ask somebody what they think you should do. One of the first rules we teach, don't ask anybody. We've been taught for years, go to your sanctum sanctorum, go to the quiet place, go to the closet, close the door, go inside. You know that what I'm telling you is true. Now, you may not believe this will work, but you believe I believe it will work. That's where I was at when Ray Stanford gave me this book. He said, you can have anything you want, Bob. I did not believe him. But you know something? Thank God I believed he believed it, and I decided to do it. Trust me. I've got a great reputation all over the world. Do you think I'm going to ruin my reputation? or something like that, not on your life. My reputation is going to become stronger because of you. Now look it. We can show you how to turn your annual income to a monthly income. Now that's a pretty bold promise, but it's one that we can safely make. We can actually safely make it. To be able to shape your future, you have to be willing and able to change your paradigm. And if you're not willing to do that, it won't work. And you know what it boils down to? It boils down to a decision. Do you know, in this book, he wrote a whole chapter on decision. This is one of the most complete books on life that you're going to get. 
And he pointed out that every one of the rich people, all the wealthy people, all the successful people, had the habit of making decisions very fast and change them very slow if and when they change them at all. I'm going to ask you to make a decision. It might be a little scary, but make it anyway. Make up your mind you're going to study this. You're going to follow the person's directive that put you on this line. You get a hold of them and say, listen, whatever Proctor's talking about, I want some of it. <laughs> It'll change your life. It really will. I use this every day. I'll be 84 in about three or four weeks. I got more energy than most people that are 24. Where does that energy come from? You don't get energy, you release energy. Everybody's got the same energy. It's a matter of releasing it. Desire is a triggering mechanism to release energy. If you want to add a dimension of excitement and a dimension of meaning to your life, get into thinking into results. Use this program. Follow the direction that we give you, and your life will change like night and day. When you see me, and you'll probably see me because I'm out on the road, I travel all the time. Come up and thank me for making this presentation. But follow the one dictate that I was taught first. Don't ask anyone what you should do unless they've already done it themselves. You want to become wealthy, I'll tell you, this is the path to go on. If you want to become healthy, this is the path to follow on. If you want to become happy, this is the path to follow on. You see, happiness, health, and wealth is a natural state for a creative being like you and I to be in. Make a decision. Just even if you get a little question, try it. You're going to spend the sixty-two fifty over the next year anyway, and you're going to spend the time anyway. What did you get out of it last year? You spent that last year. What did you get? Did you multiply your income? I'm telling you, you will need a telescope to look back and see where you are. And you'll be so glad you tuned into this. But you know why? It works. Now, I want to thank you for tuning into this. I want to thank you for giving me the hour. And if you paid attention, this hour is an hour you'll remember for a long time because it'll change your life. Now, get on the phone as soon as you turn this off. Just like that, get on the phone. Phone the person invited you say, I want to get, a, I want to get some of that. I want to have what Proctor's doing, because this is what I'm doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.